We give you praise. We honor you, Lord, because you are God. Seated on the throne, the great and mighty God. We worship you, O God. From the depths of our heart, we appreciate you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of grace. Thank you, Lord, for attracting us to your presence. Lord, we owe our lives to you. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll come together this morning, O God, to hear from you. We're here this morning to tap from heaven's resources. And Lord, we pray we'll go through the pages of the scriptures. Pray you open our eyes and help us to connect with heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. The letter will always kill, but the spirit will always give life. As we go through the scriptures, Lord, let us not see just letters. But let the life come from those pages. And let our lives be refreshed in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of the living God, we pray you have your way in this place. We are thirsty souls. Pray you fill us in the name of Jesus. Every strange spirit, Lord, we expel from this place. Have your way in this place, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for... Our service today has been a wonderful time in God's presence. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And here we are today, and since morning, God has been blessing us. Our opening prayer time, our STS time, all the time we've spent singing. And God has been blessing us in one way or the other. At this time, God has a word to give us. It might just be one person. Amen? It might just be one person, this word is for I don't know. It might be for every one of us, but I pray you will be that person in Jesus' name. We're looking at this topic that says unreliable alternatives. Unreliable alternatives. When we talk of alternatives, it tells us there are options. When you talk of alternatives, it means there is option A, B, C, D, no matter how long the list might be, but there are options. And among all those options, there's always one that is the best. And then, from if you subtract the one that is the best, the rest are alternatives. And what we are discussing this morning, we're not trying to you know, teach us how to make choices. We're trying to show us, by the grace of God, that there are some alternatives Christians hold on to. There are some alternatives Christians pursue after that are unreliable. We had our SCS study this morning and we saw the case of King Saul. King Saul, at a critical time in his life, he went for an unreliable alternative. This man, we're told when he was anointed king, the Spirit of God came upon him. He prophesied. And at the lowest point of his life, he didn't think of going to the reliable option. He went to the unreliable alternative, the witch at Endor. And so, from inception of existence, men have been presented with options. We are discussing this today because as you go through life, you are faced with options. Every human being is faced with options. You had an option of either staying in bed or waking up to come to church this morning. So every day of our lives, we are faced with options. From the inception of life, from the Garden of Eden, there were options. We want to go through a list of all the options people have been faced with in life, especially in biblical times. You know? And we start from the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, God created the Garden of Eden. He dressed it and he put the tree of good and evil in the garden. And Adam and Eve, they had, the op they had options. The option was, do not eat of this tree or eat of it. And so from the very inception of existence, man was faced with options. Abraham, as he came to know about God, he had the option of remaining where he was. You know, he was staying with his family. God called him, follow me. He had the option of staying back or the option of following God. Even to the point where God wanted him to offer his son. He had the option of offering his son or the option of keeping his son 
from the offering. Lot had the option. You know, he had options before him to choose among Sodom and Gomorrah and some other place where to settle down. Lot's wife, he had options too. She had options. The options he had was either to obey the angels that were leading them out of destruction or to obey her curious mind to look back to see what was going on. Jacob, he had the option either to continue his life as a supplanter or to wrestle with the angel at Penuel to change his destiny. Joseph was faced with options as well. You know, we were told Joseph was in Potiphar's house and he had the option of either defiling himself with Potiphar's wife or honoring God. Esau was faced with options. You know, he had the wonderful plate of food staring at him on one side and the bat, his back right on the other side. And so all through biblical times, men have been faced with options. In the New Testament, the 12 disciples, they had the option of following Christ. Every one of them, they had their professions. They had their careers. They were doing well in their professions. They had the option of following Christ or remaining with their career, to their profession, Judas Iscariot. He had two options, Jesus Christ and 30 pieces of silver. And so we see all through the scriptures, people were faced with options. People were faced with options. The early church, the early church, you know, when the elders called them and were trying to compel them to obey them, they said, we'd rather obey God than men. And so they had option to obey God or to obey man. And so through the scriptures, we see men were faced with options. And in our own contemporary time, we are faced with options. In the morning, before you go out, you need to decide which dress am I going to wear. You know, options face us, what am I going to eat? We face options every time. And so the list goes on and on about options in the scriptures. Some people argue, you know, they say, why would God make life cumbersome for us? Why would God give us all these options? And some people even go to the point of calling God a Confucianist. People say, God knew um, Adam and Eve might make a mistake. You know, why did he leave the tree in the Garden of Eden? And people think, God allow all these options because he's trying to confuse man. But brethren, guess what? God is trying to give us access to the power of choice. Amen? There is power in choice. There is power in decision. There is power in decision. God created us as free moral agents. And then when we make a decision on what to do, there's a power that goes with it. Let's look at Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. There is power in decision. And that's why God created us in his image, the image of God. You know, when I go through the scriptures and I hear when God says, I will, there's power that comes behind that. When God says, I will do this, there's a power that follows that statement. And God created us in his image. And part of that image is to be able to generate power through our will, through our decision. Genesis chapter 11, I'll read in verse 6. After the flood, you know, people started coming up and they were trying to, you know, establish a kind of empire. Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. It says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and these they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. God was talking about people who have no record these people were saved. There's no record here that they were children of God. They were just mere human beings that made up their mind they want to build a tower that will reach unto God. And God here confirmed that nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And that's the power that comes with decision. And that's why God gives us options. He will set good and evil before you and then advise you to choose in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And say so that's the kindness of God. God will not just give us options, but he will recommend the best option for us. Genesis in chapter 30 verse 15. 
Genesis, sorry, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'll read verses 15 and 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 in verse 15. It says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. Let's go up to verse 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, do what? Choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. God will give us options. The purpose of giving us options is for us to decide. And once we decide, it generates a power within us. Unfortunately, some people decide for the evil. Some power is generated as well. And that's why you see people will decide to do evil and it's as if something is pushing them and they can't go back. And they can't go back. But God is saying, I recommend to you to choose good. I recommend you to choose good. Choose life that thou and thy seed may live. And so, brethren, choices, options will face us in life. Options will face us in life. But the question is, how do you make those choices? What, do you, what are the basis for the decisions you make? What are the basis for the decisions you make? John chapter 1. As we come to know the Lord, the very first thing that happens is a decision. It's a decision to receive Christ. Genesis, John chapter 1, verse 12. John 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received him is a choice, is a decision. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and I do what? I knock. It's optional. You see, one thing God will not do is to impose himself on any man. That is exactly the character of the devil. The devil is a slave master and he puts people under bondage of habits and various vices. But Christ, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, will stand humbly at the door and knock. And once that sinner opens the door, makes the decision to open the door. Look at verse 12 again. But as many as received him, they that make the decision to receive him, to them gave he what? Power to become the sons of God. And so there's always power that follows decision. There's power that follows decision. And that's why we need to be careful about the decisions we are making. We need to be careful about the decisions we are making. Some people make decisions and it ends them in suicide. Some people make some decisions and it's as if, you know, when you're driving a car and the brake is not working and you're going down a hill and you can't stop yourself. Brethren, it's very important the decisions we make. The purpose of this message is not to, like I said before, show us the best option, but is to let us know there are alternatives and then to understand that there is one alternative, not even an alternative, there is one option that is reliable, who is Jesus Christ himself. King Saul was running after various alternatives. You know, he tried to hear from God, he wouldn't hear from God, he tried to do some contact Urim and all those things and he wasn't getting the answer he wanted and then he went deeper into darkness going to consult a witch how I pray when we are in critical situations we are not going to go for alternatives that are unreliable in Jesus name that's why we have Jesus that's why we have Jesus you know, people run around looking at alternatives when Jesus is right there before them. You know, in my language, they say somebody is by the river bank and there's, there's um, soap in the person's eye. Can you imagine that? Somebody is by a large body of water and there's soap in that person's eye. Just dip into the water and wash your eyes. Some people will be in a place like this and they won't experience what Jesus can do for them. How I pray will experience Jesus today in Jesus' name. 
And so we're looking at alternatives. We're going to see two things this morning before we pray. Number one, unreliable and dispensable options. Unreliable. There are some options that are unreliable. Those options, we can do away with them. We can do away with them. That's the challenge we're having this morning. You know, we can do away with those options. We spend so much time, so much effort going after those options. We can do away with them. They're unreliable. And then we're going to see the reliable and indispensable option. Jesus Christ himself. He's the one that's reliable. And he's the one we cannot do without. Unreliable and dispensable options. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14 in verse 12. Human beings, by the grace of God, have been equipped with smartness. And because God is a wise God, an all-wise God, when he created man, he put a fraction of that wisdom in man. And that's why man can go about and develop a lot of things today. You know, we can depend on the knowledge, the scientific knowledge of man to do most of, you know, life's everyday activity. But you see, the wisdom of man is limited. Proverbs chapter 14 in verse 12. It says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. No matter who the man is, no matter who the man is, as long as we are in this human flesh, we are limited in knowledge. We are limited in inspiration. And so there's a way we'll look at things, we'll be like, this is the best way to do it. This is the best way to go. This is the best way to go. But unfortunately, that may be the way that's leading to death. It may not be a sinful thing. It may not be something that's sinful. But you know, eventually, if, you're done, if you don't take care, it may result in destruction. And so, brethren, that's why alternative options that are unreliable, we should be aware of them. You know, somebody said, how far you can see is determined by your elevation. How far you can see is determined by your elevation. You have a building that's like a hundred story, you know, a hundred story building. You have somebody at the first floor and you have somebody at the hundredth floor, at the top of the building. Now the person at the top of the building will see farther than the person on the first floor. Are we making sense? And so the higher someone is, the farther the person can see. The farther the person can see. Let's be logical here. God is seated in the heavens. He's seated in the heavens. And we are like ants on the earth. And so the way we see things definitely is different from how God sees things. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel was banking on his experience. God told him, I'm tired of Saul. I'm tired of King Saul. Go and anoint me another king. And he was depending on his experience. And he went to the house of Jesse. What did he do? 1 Samuel chapter 16, I'll read verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And so Samuel was depending on his experience, his experience of anointing Saul. Saul had similar features like Eliab. Saul was tall, he was good looking, and when he came into the house of JC, he was like, logical, this plus this is equal to this, this is the man. God said, no, that's not how it works. And so it also happens to us. Think of Samuel, he was a prophet. He was a unique personality in the land of Israel at that time. You know, his relationship with God was very high, but he made this mistake. He almost made this mistake. And so how about us today? You know, it's important when we, when we look at things, we don't look at the face level. 
We don't look at the face value because, you know, God sees more than we can see. That's why we need to depend on God. That's why we need to depend on the insight God gives us when it comes to making decisions. And so, we want to look at some areas of life. We're talking about all reliable and dispensable options. We want to see some areas of life where people are faced with options. And then we'll see some of the things they do to help themselves. You know, we'll see some of those dispensable options, those things they try to do as self-help. Some of those things may be legitimate, may not be sinful. Some of them definitely are sinful. We're not trying to, we're just trying to present, you know, what happens in our everyday life. And then we'll go from there and look at the other indispensable option we have as we go through life. Number one, we see the issue of life. We're talking of spiritual life. People are faced with the challenge of sin. Some people, sin is holding them down. Sin is holding them down. Praise the Lord. If you have seen a sinner, you know, praise the Lord. Evangelism is important. Amen. Evangelism is important because there are some situations some people are living in that they need to be rescued. They need to be rescued before they perish. You know, you see some sinners, they'll go deeper into sin just to help themselves. Somebody starts with drinking and because he's trying to, you know, cover an unhappiness. And he starts with one bottle of drink or one shot, and then he keeps advancing, and at a point, it's not helping him. He goes into drugs. And then some people go even to the point of killing people, because when they kill people, they feel there's nothing else that can happen to them. And that's how people go deeper and deeper into sin. Some other people, they give their life to Christ, but there's a besetting sin. There's a besetting sin. They keep going in a vicious cycle put in place by the devil. They will give their life to Christ today. They go, go live here on Sunday. By Wednesday, they go back to that besetting sin. They come back on Sunday. They give back their life to Christ. And then they go back, and there's that cycle the issue of life. Some people, pornography is holding them down. Pornography is holding them down. You know, holding them down. Some people, they have some irresistible habits. Some other people, their addictions are not helping, are not, are not letting them go free. And what do people do to try to help themselves? You know, they try abstinence. Some people go for rehabilitation. Some people lock themselves up. They'll go to an island in the Caribbean, a rehab center, and they'll be locked up for months. And these are things people are trying because there's the desire to be free from those things. But they are trying options that are unreliable. Somebody wants to be saved from sin, saved from drug addiction, and the person is trying rehab. I'm not saying these things are bad. These things might be good in themselves. But are they ultimately reliable? No, we have some people, some of all these Hollywood stars, they go through rehab, and when they come out, they go back to the same thing. Unreliable options. Some people go through, you know, psychological counseling. You know, they, they give it names. They call it men, they have mental issues. It's not mental issues. The devil is dealing with them. And the Lord will help them in Jesus' name. Marriage and family life. People go through the challenge of choosing a, you know, a life partner. Some other people, they're having relationship challenges in their families. Some are having difficult spouses or difficult children. And what options, what unreliable options do people resort to to help them? You know, to get a life partner, people these days, they go to dating sites. They go to, they use they all these dating apps. I heard about one, I was laughing. They call it Christ, Christian 
Christian mingle. I'm like, how are you bringing Christianity into this thing? How are you bringing Christian, the name Christian, into this thing? And so people try all those things in a way to help themselves. You know, people go to marriage counselors. These are all good, legitimate things. But ultimately, are they unreliable options? In their careers and profession, people trying to decide the career to pursue, trying to decide where to settle for work, decide the kind of business to, you know, to go into. They resort to palm readers. You know, in the village back then, some people, some parents would take their children to the witch doctor. For the witch doctor to say what is in the future of the child. Some resort to parental advice. You know, some, some look at family tradition in the choice of their career because our lineage are all lawyers. I need to be a lawyer as well. Our lineage are all, you know, medical doctors. I need to be a medical doctor. People resort to all these options, you know, in their making decisions. The question is, are they reliable? You know, in choosing where to settle, where to buy a house, where to raise children, people go to consult maps. The best place, you go to Google, best place to live, best place to raise children. You know, those are logical, those are things that make sense. But brethren, are they, unreli are they reliable enough? Are they reliable enough? You're going through hell challenges. Going through hell challenges. People go to the doctors. Doctors are in a, around us is one of the best options. But the question is, are they the best option? What I'm trying to do here by the grace of God is to show us all these options and we need to start assessing them. Are these options the best we can afford? Are these options the best we can make use of? If it's the best option for you, it's your choice. I pray the Lord will help us to make the best of options in Jesus' name. Going through financial challenges, you know, poverty, loss of investment, their financial need. What do people do? They go through get quick, you know, get rich quick schemes. You know, people go to play the lottery. I was reading in the news, the mega something is up to like 1.6 billion now. You know, people look at that. That's an opportunity to get money. And people, you know, do some things. They go to pay their loans, and all they're trying to do is to try options. Brethren, the question again is, those that have been trying these options, how well have they been helped? One of my pastors back home used to say, if the religion you're professing is not helping you, if it's not changing your life, change that, that religion. Change it. Now, I think that was what brought him to Christ. He said, if the religion you, process, you profess is not changing your life, then you have to change that religion. And so if it happens that you've been trying any of these things and there's no change, there's no change, then you need to leave using that option. You need to you know, stop you know, going to use those options and then try a more and a better option. And I pray as we do this, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, that's what I'm going to. Jesus Christ is a reliable option. Jesus Christ is a reliable option. Our, our children think the best friend to have is Jesus. The best friend to have is Jesus. We sang this morning, Christ Jesus has the power. Christ Jesus has the power. In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, I read from verse 4 to 7. It's not just enough for you, you know, to, to know, to, to, to believe in Christ. We are getting there. It's not enough for you to believe in Christ. It's not just enough for you to believe in Christ. You need to know him. You need to know him as the option. You need to know him as the reliable, the only reliable option. 
Luke chapter 5, from verse 4 to 7. The disciples, before they became disciples, they were toiling. Peter and some of his friends, they were toiling all night. But when Christ showed up, Christ was the option they had been looking for. Luke chapter 5, I'll read from verse 4. From verse 4 says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Let's stop there for the moment. Simon was a professional in what he does. You know, he, he was a professional fisherman. And he had spent nothing, he said all night, they had told all night. They had spent nothing less than six hours trying various strategies. You know, borrowing from their expertise, borrowing from everything they knew about fishing. And they got nothing. But thank God, he made the choice to obey Christ. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, despite my experience, despite all my efforts, despite, you know, uh, he wasn't just working alone, he was working with his friends, despite their synergy of experiences, he said, at thy word, I will let down the net. Verse 6, and when they had, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. Verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sing. That was that's what happens when the reliable option shows up. You know, when we resort to other unreliable options. What happens to us is that we toil all night. Brethren, time is very precious. Time is precious. Ask the man on his dying bed. He wants more time to do some other things he's not done. Despite his age, time is precious. And so we should not spend our whole life consulting all these unreliable options. When the option, the reliable option, the only reliable option we need is right there. Like the person that has soap in his eyes and he's by the river bank. Christ is a reliable option. In Mark chapter 5, the, the disciples, they spent, they told all night, they wasted time and effort. Let's look at the case of this woman. This woman we are told she spent all she had. Mark chapter 5 from verse 25. Mark chapter 5 from verse 25. 25 says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians. When I read the Bible sometimes, I try to pick meaning from every single word. And verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians. Physicians are professionals. Physicians are supposed to have solution to medical problems. But the Bible says this woman suffered many things from them and has spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When I was reading this passage, something struck me. The Bible said she spent, she had spent all that she had. You know, the emphasis on all that she had means that this woman probably was wealthy. She had a lot of possessions. She had a lot of possessions. But because of this one challenge, because of this one issue, she spent all that she had. She sold all her assets, all her houses, all her wrappers, all her trinkets. She sold everything. But she grew worse. She grew worse. Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, 
came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, he said straightway, that means immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She spent all that she had. Let's not be too fast, you know, to castigate this woman. People will say, why will you have to spend every of your resources till you became bankrupt? Then you remembered Jesus was the solution to your problem. Let's think of our own selves. Let's think of our own selves. What are we doing today that is different from what this woman is doing? You know, some people, just to have solution, they will work over, over time, and they will spend money, and they will spend resources, they will sell their buildings, and they will do all these things just to have solution to their problem. When Jesus is right there, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. That money that has been spent can be left for children coming behind. That money that has been spent can be used for the cost of the gospel. But because people get to un realize themselves late. You know, some people, they take Christ as a last bus stop. They will go through all the various options and then when they get tired, they will not come to Christ. Those are unnecessary. How I pray God will give us wisdom to realize who Christ is. That he is a reliable option. And as we understand who he is and come with that knowledge, God will visit us in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible says how God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Wherever he comes to, his purpose is to do good. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And so the challenge to us is to recognize Jesus. Recognize Jesus. Recognize Jesus. You know, some people believe in Christ. We get to know, you know, we come to salvation by believing in Christ. You believe and then you give your life to Christ and you are saved. But Paul the Apostle made us to understand he shouldn't stop at believing Christ. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the Old Testament, the Israelites knew God by what he did for them. God will provide for them and they will give God a name. God will heal them and they will give God a name. They knew God by what he did. But the challenge God is bringing to us today is not just to know him by what he's doing for us, but to know him for who he is and move him to do things he has not done. I pray the Lord give us revelation in Jesus' name. What are we saying? You know God as your healer and you challenge him. You go through the scriptures. How do you know God? How do you know he's a healer? You go, you read the scriptures. As you read the scriptures, you get to know God is the one that heals us. And you go to God in prayer. This is who you are. Reveal yourself as a healer to me. In 2 Timothy, I want to read chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Paul the Apostle, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. It says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. It says, For I know whom I have believed. Let's stop there. It says, For I know, comma, I'm putting a comma there, For I know, comma, whom I have believed. And so he's saying, I didn't just stop at believing Christ. I didn't stop at believing in who God is. He says, but I know him. I know him. That's a higher level of relationship with God. It's not just that you believe he's the son of God. He's the, he died on the cross for us. You know, he's this, he's, a, he's this and he's that. But you know him for the things he can do. And that's why we are told that Moses, God revealed his ways to Moses. 
The Israelites were comfortable with the acts of God because they saw what God was doing and they knew God for that. But Moses went deeper. He wanted to know God for God. You know, more than what God was doing for the Israelites. More than what God was showing the Israelites. He wanted to know God for God. And that's why God was able to reveal himself to him. So what we're trying to talk about, we're not saying you just believe. It's good to believe in Christ, believe in Jesus. But more than believing in Jesus, know him. Know that he is able to take care of this situation, to take care of that situation, to take care of this other situation. You know, when we, when we have the desire to know God, when we seek to know God, God reveals himself to us. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11 in verse 32. Daniel 11 in verse 32. And as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, do know their God. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. And so, more than coming to church and praying, Lord, I believe in you, Lord, I believe in you, you go about singing. Those are wonderful things. Brethren, let's dig deeper. Let's know God. Let's know him for who he is. Let's know him for what he can do. Know him as the only option you have. As the only option you have. If you go to God and you hold on to the horns of the altar and say, God, you are the only option I have. You are the only help I have. God will reveal himself to you that way. God will reveal himself to you that way. I pray the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. You know, you will press forward. Coming to church is good. Coming, you know, coming for Bible study and revival, all those things are good. But in your personal life, you want to make some efforts, some personal efforts to know God. A chorister sang, try Jesus. How can you try someone you don't know? If I give you a tool to use, I give you a wonderful car to drive. If you can't drive it, it's useless to you. But if you know how to operate that car, You'll be one of the happiest person in town. And so it's not just enough to have Jesus. I have Jesus. I believe in Jesus. You carry Jesus around much more than that. More deeper than that. Know him. Know how Jesus operates. And how do you know how he operates? Is by reading the Bible. Reading the scriptures. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. As we get to know him, we become stronger. We become stronger. First John, I'll read chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 14. It says, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are what? Strong. And the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Young men here were saying, John was saying they are strong. Not only because of their youthfulness, you know, but because the word of God abides in them. It's the word of God abiding in them that makes them strong. You know, they read the word of God and they get to know who God is. And that gives them strength. That person can be you here in this place today. You know more of God and there's that inner strength. And the devil can't mess with you. The devil can't mess with you. You know, there was a time I, a very strange thing happened to me when I was very young. I used to sleep on the bed with my elder brother. And I was very young then, but I knew who God was. You know, I knew who God was. I knew what he could do. I pray. I was a, by God's grace, I was a Christian. I was born again. And at night, rats would come and be nibbling at my fingers and my toes. You know, for the first few times, and it was fun initially. First few times, I was like, okay, maybe, you know how you eat, children will eat, and you won't wash your hands, and you go to bed. I thought that was the case. I washed my hands with scented soap and all that. It happened again. My elder brother would sleep beside me, nothing would happen to him. 
It happened again and again. Then I got mad. When I got mad, I read in the scriptures what the Bible says, touch not my anointed. You know, and I went to God, I said, God, this thing is doing the wrong thing. And when I went to church that day, I prayed, and that thing stopped. It stopped. It didn't happen again. My, my people in the house, they didn't really know. I know when it first happened, I told them. They didn't really know. But I knew it was a battle. I knew it was a personal battle. And so the devil cannot mess with you when you know who your God is. When you know who your God is, when you know your position in Christ, the devil cannot mess with you. All those demonic rodents, they can't mess with you. And so that's why we need to know God. Read the scriptures, know God as a personal savior. We come to church, we say we are children of God. Know God as my personal savior. My personal savior. My personal savior. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Before we round off, we're talking about trying the, you know, the reliable option. How do we get to use this option? You know, we're not using Christ as a tool, but he is a resource as a, at our disposal. Christ is the option at our disposal that can give us the victory we need for any situation. How do we get to try Jesus? Number one, if you're a sinner, you receive him. But as many as I receive, that receive him, to them he gives power to become the sons of God. And so you receive him. If you are here, you are battling sin. Rehab is not going to help you. You know, abstinence will not help you. Locking up yourself for days will not help you. Jesus can help you. It says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. All you have to do is open your heart and receive him. He comes with power. Amen? He comes with power. And I've experienced people that were living very bad lives. And when they give their life to Christ, they didn't need any training to become Christians. The power of God enabled them and they were able to live a righteous life. If you're a backslider, return to Christ. Return to Christ before it is too late. Return to Christ. The prodigal son, the Bible said, he came to himself. There's a difference between desire and decision. You know, when you are desiring something, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak, the flesh is weak. And you are wishing and you are desiring. Don't stop at the point of desire. The prodigal son was going through, when he's eating those things with the swine, he was desiring a wonderful plate of spaghetti, you know, wonderful pizza in his father's house, wonderful bread in his father's house. He was desiring those things. But the Bible says he came to himself. That is decision right there. So that decision, a power came with that decision and he returned home. And so if you have lost the track, there is time for you here at this place. There's time for you here this morning. Return to Jesus and he will give you life in Jesus' name. Amen. Secondly, you recognize Jesus. You know, you accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. You recognize him as the only option you have. The Lord does not want to share his glory with any man, with anything. If you are sharing the glory, you know, you are telling Christ, I have some money in my bank account. I believe he can help me. So Christ, your option B, he will let you use that money. But when you recognize him as my only option, you may have all the money on earth. But even at that, you recognize him as the only option you have. You can have the wisdom to go about your business. David was a mighty man of valor. But before he took any step, he would go to God and say, God, should I go after them? And so recognize God as, recognize Jesus as your only and indispensable option. In Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, the psalmist said, I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from you, from God who made the heaven. And then number three, you reach out to Jesus. You know, you receive him, you return to him, you recognize Christ as the only option you have. You reach out to him. And how do you do that? Through prayers. Peter was drowning in the, in the sea. 
Peter, a fisherman, can swim. Any talented fisherman can swim. But he didn't depend on his skill to swim. He reached out and said, Jesus, save me. And so reach out to Jesus. From the youngest to the oldest. You know, sometimes because some, some of us who have been in the ministry for so long, we are depending on our experience in ministry. We are depending on our experience, our knowledge, you know, what we know about how things happen. Reach out to Jesus. The same way a little child will reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus that way. You know, I've, I've been around in the church for a while, and I've been to some other ministries. And something touches me when I go to some ministries, especially some white churches. You see how they pray. They don't pray the way we do. When we pray, people expect you to move and to make some sounds and to stomp your feet and do all that. When you hear these people pray, it's like a conversation with God. They're so personal with it. They're so personal. And that's what God appreciates when we come to a place of prayer. It shouldn't be mechanical. You get personal with God. Reach out to him. Jesus, look at who I am. Look at what I need. And the Lord will hear us in Jesus' name. Reach out to Jesus. Finally, you rely on the Holy Spirit's leading. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to glorify Jesus. When Christ was leaving, he said, I'll send the Comforter to you. He will glorify me. And so what he does is to help us understand more who Christ is. And then he leads us into our truth. And so the Holy Ghost will be leading us from time to time. If by the grace of God you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, he will be leading you from time to time. Even if you are not baptized by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And so at salvation, you have a measure of the Spirit. And so as many as will listen to the leading of the Spirit will not make any mistake. They will not make any mistake in life. And so brethren, that is God's word for us today. There are alternatives. There are very many alternatives. There are many options. But out of those options, there is one that is reliable. And that reliable option is Jesus Christ. You may have tried all other options. You may have wasted time and money working on all other options. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? I want us to go to God in prayers this morning. Go to God's prayers. And you want to commit yourself before the Lord? You want to commit yourself before the Lord? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? You know, people want to go to, from here to Maryland and they'll drive up to New York and then detour to New Jersey and then go to Western Virginia, go through Virginia and then come back to Maryland. Why will you go round? Why will you make all these unnecessary stops? Why not come straight to the giver of life? Why not come straight to the solution of the problem? Jesus himself. Jesus himself. Jesus himself. Have you tried Jesus? That's a question I'm asking you this morning. That's a question the Lord is asking you this morning. Have you tried Jesus? You can't try someone you don't know. You can't use a tool you don't know about. And so for you to try Jesus, you need to know him. You need to experience him. You need to know him experientially. And then he can walk in your life. He can walk in your life. He can walk in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, one of the important things we need to do is to receive him. Is to return to him. And if you happen to be here and Christ is still standing outside your life, it's possible you are the reason why this word is coming this morning. And God is giving you a chance to make your ways right. Wherever you are, I want you to commit yourself before the Lord this morning and say, Lord, I want to make an end of sin in my life. I want to make an end of this vicious cycle. Somebody said, the devil learns from our mistakes. The devil learns from our mistakes, even when we don't learn from them. And there's a besetting sin. The devil has learned he can hold you bondage with that sin. 
But Jesus is standing by. I want to say, Jesus save me. Jesus help me. Jesus help me. It don't matter who you are. It's an issue of life and death. You want to say, Jesus help me. Jesus help me. You know, sometimes because people, they know their lives are not right. That's why they don't resort to God. They want to come before God and say, God, I want to fix the record. I want to fix the record. I want to fix the record. And the Lord will help you. The Lord will help you. Today is a day of divine appointment. The Lord wants to help you. Just reach out to him. Say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. And he will reach out with salvation. Lord, we pray you just listen to them and answer in Jesus' name. Let the power to go and sin no more, O oh Lord. Let it come upon them in Jesus' name. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested to destroy the powers, the works of the enemy. Lord, every work of the enemy in their lives, pray because Christ has risen, let those works be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every evil habit, every besetting sin, Lord, let there be freedom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still praying. I want to commit ourselves now to the hands of the Lord. You want to look into your life. Everybody look into your life. Is there a challenge in your life? Is there a challenge in your life? Is there a challenge in your life? Jesus has the power. Christ Jesus has the power to address that challenge. Christ Jesus has the power to address that challenge. You want to go before God and say, Lord, this challenge in my life, Lord, challenge it. This challenge in my finances, oh Lord, challenge it. This challenge among my children, in my home, Lord, challenge it. Christ Jesus has the power. He has the power. He can cause deliverance. Yes, he can cause deliverance. He can cause deliverance from every kind of situation. He can cause deliverance. You want to reach out to him this morning. Say, Jesus, 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 you are the only option I have. Concerning this issue, Jesus, you are the only option. And he will show up for you. Call upon the Lord. If you don't call upon him, how is he going to come and help you? If you don't call upon him, how is he going to come and help you? Say, Jesus, you are the only option I have. That woman with the issue of blood, she spent everything. And when she came to herself, she knew Jesus was the only option she had. Say, Lord Jesus, you are the only solution to my problem. You are the only solution to my problem. This challenge in my life, this challenge in my family, Jesus, I recognize you as the only solution. 